about to leave Already packing, come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away to a place where we don't know About to see the world in action What we can be, life with no distractions We'll get away this is Once it's pulled, I'll take it outside and we roll it That's ridiculous I, it is ridiculous, and but maybe it'll work. I don't know. Um, we got to pull it anyhow to replace it, so we might as well try that and see if it works. And if it does, that would be fantastic. We'll put it back in, put the doors back on, and carry on. Otherwise, I'll order a new fridge because it's going to take a while to get one. Yeah, not a cheap proposition. So I guess it might pay to go roll it around in the parking lot. We're going to go roll it. <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> so what do we got to lose? Okay. So to remove the fridge, I'm first going to remove the doors just so that I don't damage them because I have a chance that I can use these again. Um, so I undid a screw here for the door hinge to pull that off and the magnet's kind of holding the door on right now. So I'll open it and I should be able to pull it up and get it off of this hinge and then remove it completely, I believe. It slips. off of there. So same thing with the fridge door. There's a pin here. You unscrew that, pull it out. And again, the magnets for the door seal are holding the door on right now. Um, we should be able to open this up, hanging on to it, sporting it. This will come out and then you pull it up and your door comes off. So once you get the top trim off the fridge, um, there's two screws holding it into the frame. One here and one here. So I'll go ahead and remove those. Okay, well there's one. Okay, I'm not sure why those were so difficult. It's a good thing I'm not being paid by the hour. Typically what I've found on YouTube is there's screws on the top and the bottom holding the fridge in. Um, and you normally have to take this trim off. And I tried getting this trim off, but it won't come off all the way. And I didn't want to break it because we may have a chance of reusing this fridge. I was able to get the one off on this side, but then I realized it's in the same spot. Just the other, like this is held on by a screw to the fridge. Uh, which is this screw and then the screw to hold the fridge in is down lower and there's actually another hole through the same hole that can access that screw to release the fridge so I didn't actually have to take this off so each fridge is different I couldn't find this particular one on YouTube now it's on YouTube back there but there's a DC connection AC connection and a propane connection that we'll have to disconnect so here at the back of the fridge I've removed the two screws at the back one of them is here now I've moved this ahead about a half inch and I had to chip out some of this glue because it was holding it in place the other one is on the other side back here I've also removed the DC power which was here and I'll tape these up in case it got plugged in or something or even when we turn the truck on um, I've also unplugged the AC from here and disconnected the propane here and I'll put some tape over these too so that no dirt gets in there because uh, on either end um, until we get either this fridge back in or a new fridge. That's pretty much it. So now we should be able to push the fridge out to the front and then get it out of the trailer and then, well, we roll it. <laughs> How heavy is it, do you think? We're going to find out. Okay, I'm coming in. Yeah, she's a bit heavy. Yeah, it is. Now, now what? what? <laughs> this is part of the plan. <laughs> what plan?
plan. Roll it. Roll it. Definitely gurgling. You hear that? Okay. That's a good thing. Let's bring you out. Okay. So what are you thinking? Well, the idea was to roll it. Um, and when we tipped it upside down, you could hear all the fluid running. Basically, we're going to roll it. I don't know. We'll leave it for 20 minutes, half an hour, and just get this fluid moving and hopefully not settled anymore so it will be mixed together and break apart any um, obstructions and then once we've done that for you know five six seven times complete revolutions we'll plug it back in and see if it works and actually cools the fridge off so this is an experiment it is <laughs> and it's an experiment we have nothing to lose i mean either way we got to take this fridge out if this works it could be a good fridge hack because there's probably a lot of fridges that get thrown away that maybe could work. And, and it's because it sat so long without operating was, was the reason that it's done this, I think. This fridge weighs about, I think it weighs about 130 pounds total. So it's not too bad to flip. I've got it on some cardboard and some foam so I don't damage it because I am hoping I can reuse it. So I rolled the fridge about four times completely. Um, and then I started it up on electric. The coils and everything got warm like they're supposed to. Um, it wasn't real cold inside, but I didn't leave it very long. I've got this heated up. I'm just gonna try rolling it again now that it's hot. Um, and maybe that will loosen some more stuff up. So this fridge, <laughs> this fridge. Um, Y'all know we took it out, I've rolled it. I let it run for a while, I rolled it again. I let it run for a long time, then I shut it off, rolled it again another seven times, smacked all the piping in the back every time I rolled it. Realistically, this should be close to zero Fahrenheit. This should be under 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna check them again today. We found a repair shop that does gas or propane fridges. Uh, that's about an hour and 15 minutes away from here. So if this isn't working, we're gonna take it there and see what he can do. He'll probably have to rebuild or replace the cooling unit. Um, the fridge is in good condition, so I'm happy to keep the fridge. We priced out a new fridge, the replacement for this one today. $2,800 yes. and then install. I think we can install it ourselves, but $2,800, that's a lot of money. It is. So we're hoping freezer. There is a whoosh of cold air there. Okay. Just, I don't know if it's enough cold air. Okay, so last time it was 39 degrees. Huh. What? 50.4. It's not even as good as it was. Oh. Let's check the fridge. <clears throat> Either way, it's not getting not cold enough, so we're going to have to do something different. Let's see where we're at today. That one's not so whooshy of cold air. Which is Pretty much we're going to load this up and we're going to take it to Enderby, which is about an hour and 15 minutes from here. And hopefully we're planning on going on a trip in a week from today. Hopefully he can have the parts and fix it by then, but I know this time of year he's pretty busy, so we'll see what we can do. Let's check this one. Yeah, this one's not as good either. It's 69, and it was 57 last time I checked, so. Okay, so it's even doing less. Yeah. So. All right, unplug her and let's go. To the shop we go.
foam's got to come off. He's got to rebuild the whole cooling unit in the inside of it. Murphy's RV in Alberta has been waiting about six weeks for theirs already, and he hasn't. And even you're going to do ours by the end of the week. Yeah, that's amazing <laughs> service. <laughs> I might start taking it out at the end of the week, but uh, that's the other story. So is it. it parts that is the issue? We build them here. Okay. It's just so time. it's just time. It's the three of us, yeah. So one other question. What what's that cost? Is that thousand dollars for that? This is the chimney here. Yes. Correct? Yeah. And then this is vented down here. Yeah. And there's a vent on the roof. Yeah. So it's no there's no metal ducting or anything. It no. just your 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 fumes exhaust comes out of here yeah, and, and then it goes, goes up this up. area behind yeah. out of vent. So it's a not a forced draft vent or anything, it's just natural draft. Natural draft. Yeah, okay. A lot of them will put fans in if you're in a slider. Yeah. So, so this part is here is in the freezer. Takes the heat out of the freezer. freezer. Is it a separate system or no. separate medium from what's here? No, or actually, it's a interconnected. It's a, a, a steel network of steel yeah. tubing. Yes. And ultimately, the back side of the system is where your heat is being converted into a refrigerant. What happens? Well, we'll turn this around. Okay. Okay, generally speaking, what you're looking at is the reservoir down there. Down there. Big tube. Yeah. It contains probably a liter of ammonia water solution. Mm -hmm. Then it, the system is pressurized mm -hmm. with hydrogen. Okay. Now the hydrogen creates the environment which allows, when heat is applied, the ammonia to be distilled out of the ammonia water solution. And once you've achieved a certain percentage of production of refrigerant, which it causes, the refrigerator the freezer section to be freezing mm -hmm. then the unused portion of the liquid goes, goes into the into section the side refrigerator portion because it doesn't need to be as cold it doesn't have to be as there cold there you go okay but this has to get extreme mm -hmm. to mild and then it returns to the accumulator exactly okay you bet huh and it's just a closed loop system and and heat is what kind of activates it and gets it's the whole heat turns whole to system heat going. basically yeah you okay. use heat to get cold so back to the fridge, or where the fridge used to be. We took it out, remember? So we're getting it repaired. And in the meantime, we're going to, I don't think it's gonna be ready for our first trip. So we're gonna put a bar fridge in here. We can plug it in here. When we're hooked up, we're hooked up. I did put new propane tanks on. The one thing I need to do, because the fridge is gone, is um, I've taped up this propane connection so that no dust or spiders, spiders love propane, uh, get in here. So I need to put a plug on this um, so that it doesn't leak into the interior space. So I will double check this with some soapy water once I get the propane on and make sure that it's not leaking. This is particularly important because it is in the interior space of the trailer. The ones out of the propane tank, although critical, um, just kind of vent out to atmosphere, which aren't as dangerous. So I will do that. And then I should be able to turn the propane on. We'll check that and we should be good to go. We'll slip the bar fridge in here and hopefully that's a short term fix and would sure be nice if we even got our original fridge before we left and we could poke it in here. Right. I doubt but that'll happen. I think that's being optimistic and I'm have a habit of being optimistic and which is a good thing however it can be discouraging sometimes too when things don't go your way <laughs> so this is our backup plan it'll work so this is a temporary fridge replacement it's not near as big as the original fridge um, but it's going to have to do for the week that we're going to meet up with Courtney and show her what we've done <laughs> This is her surprise. It is. Not the fridge, but the rest of it. The fact that we have this trailer. So there is a 110 volt plug back here. And there's a couple of spots I can actually screw it down so that it doesn't fall out. But we're planning to be plugged in most of the time. Right. So um, 
should be okay. We'll bring the generator if we have to run the generator for a little while um, between destinations or whatever, then we can do that. Okay, so not ideal. It's not ideal. But we're going and we need a fridge. Yeah, this is better than a cooler. And, and we could actually stick a cooler on top of here. And the other fridge is being repaired. It is. Should be done in about 10 days. So when we get back, we can go pick it up, put it in here, and she'll all be good. All right, next.